These ain't no easy lovers. Against all odds, an array of music icons can't stop hating Phil Collins. Kurt Cobain was never shy about discussing his fellow musical artists. The Nirvana frontman championed independent bands from America and abroad, and he was always happy to dismiss any groups he didn't like, whether it was down to their music, their attitude, or even their ticket prices. Wow. Madonna charges $50, apparently. For example, he once commented that Guns N' Roses had nothing to say and suggested that True Rebellion was standing up to bands like that. Those remarks, however, seem mild in comparison to what he had to say about Genesis and Phil Collins. In an interview with Melody Maker, Cobain offered a dramatic pause before venting his feelings about Collins' work. He said, You know what I hate about rock? I hate Phil Collins. All of that white male soul. I hate tie-dyed t-shirts. I wouldn't wear a tie-dyed t-shirt unless it was dyed with the urine of Phil Collins and the blood of Jerry Garcia. Cobain's wife, Courtney Love, who was present for that interview, castigated him for the juvenile finish to his remarks. For his part, Collins made no public reply, though the Chicago Tribune saw in his album Both Sides a suggestion of creative parenthood to Cobain's rebellious generation. In an interview with John Edgington, Phil Collins admitted to not being a fan of some of his musical peers, at least when it came to their work. While he got on well with them personally, he suggested that bands such as Yes, Jethro Tull, and Pink Floyd didn't do it for him. The latter group, he said, grew on him over the years. But back in the 1980s, things were different. I was in a band that was kind of being always put in the same box as that lot, but never felt that we actually were in the same box. As it turned out, the feeling was mutual. At the height of Collins's popularity, the singer was such an ever-present force on the music scene that Floyd frontman Roger Waters complained about him to the Herald Journal. Waters said, I find the ubiquitous nature of Phil Collins's presence in my life irritating. In another interview, Waters divided songwriters into those who wrote from the heart and those who wrote to fill up space, and he put Collins firmly in the latter camp. Waters did lighten his comments somewhat, though, telling musician, I seem to always wind up attacking poor Phil Collins, but it's only because he's so visible. He's symptomatic of an awful lot of it. The feeling I get is that he's pretending to be a songwriter or a rock and roller. It's an act. That's why it's unsatisfying. Kurt Cobain and Roger Waters' remarks about Phil Collins and Genesis may have been harsh, but they were at least confined to comments on his music. Noel Gallagher of Oasis was more relentless and more personal. Not that he didn't have things to say about Collins' discography. As he once said, just because you sell lots of records, it doesn't mean to say you're any good. Look at Phil Collins. He was more crass on another occasion, telling Rolling Stone, people hate f***ing like Phil Collins, and if they don't, they f***ing should. People are allowed to say things about me. Yeah. But you see, Phil Collins knows he can't say anything about me because I'm the f And in the 2005 parliamentary elections, Gallagher took another shot at Collins and his alleged right-wing political views. Referring to Collins' status as a tax exile in Switzerland, Gallagher urged, vote Labour. If you don't and the Tories get in, Phil is threatening to come back. Collins hasn't responded directly to some of his musical critics, but being such a frequent target of derision has gotten to him at times, and in an appearance on BBC Two's Room 101, he snapped back. The gimmick of the show is to name pet peeves and banish them to the titular room. Collins picked Gallagher and his brother Liam. He said, They're rude and not as talented as they think they are. I won't mince words here, but they've had a go at me personally. Some musicians don't agree on matters of taste, others have clashing personalities, and some find that collaboration breeds animosity. In 1985, Led Zeppelin emerged from a five-year hiatus to perform at Live Aid, but they were short one drummer. They ended up with two replacements, Tony Thompson and Phil Collins, who later said that he'd misunderstood the nature of the gig. He thought he was playing with Jimmy Page and Robert Plant as individuals, not as a reunited Zeppelin. Collins' busy playing schedule also meant that he couldn't rehearse with the band before his arrival for the Philadelphia concert, so he had to listen to the tracks en route. When he arrived for the very brief practice window available, he and Page immediately butted heads. Collins later recalled to Classic Rock, Robert said, Jimmy Page is belligerent. Page says, we've been rehearsing. And I said, I saw your first gig in London. I know the stuff. The set was a 20-minute disaster for Zeppelin, and Page put the blame squarely on Collins. Immediately after Live Aid, Page complained loudly about the drummer who wasn't prepared or available, refusing to mention him by name. It was a refrain he was still sounding in 2021 to the Sunday Times when he said the drummer just could not get the beginning of rock and roll. I've seen the footage of it and there's this point where I can see on my face it's like, oh my god, this is... <laughs> 
There's at least one feud with a fellow musician that Phil Collins started himself. In 2002, he was performing at a party in Buckingham Palace when he had a chance to meet one of his heroes, the Beatle Paul McCartney. The encounter did not go well, at least in Collins' mind. When he asked McCartney to sign a copy of Hunter Davis's Beatles biography, he felt the ex-Beatle acted in a condescending manner. He later told the Sunday Times, He has this thing when he's talking to you, where he makes you feel, I know this must be hard for you because I'm a Beatle. I'm Paul McCartney, and and it must be very hard for you to actually be holding a conversation with me." Collins later expressed regret at airing the incident in public and told Billboard that McCartney was upset enough about the comments to reach out. He said, "...I certainly didn't get any flowers from him. I got more of a, let's just get on with our lives." Collins was almost apologetic for upsetting the former Beatle, but he couldn't bring himself to take it back. He said, "...if people don't tell people that sometimes their attitude could be a bit better, then you're not gonna get any better, you know?"